You see this web page, it means someone's got eyes on your money. Don't click into it, or try to close it off, otherwise, the money in your bank account will be forcibly transferred. This old lady got scammed out of over $2 million. Her balance turned zero, an hour ago. The old lady was on the computer. Suddenly a warning box popped up, saying, a virus has been detected on your computer. Please call the antivirus company, we will take care of it for you. The old lady was frightened, called the number on her computer. The manager on the other end answered, hello, this is the antivirus company, how can I help you? But in fact, this is a fraud corporate. The old lady told him what happened, and that she didn't know much about using a computer. The manager told the old lady, you've got a serious virus, if you're lucky, it'll be the loss of some data. If it's a serious case, the hard disk will have to be scrapped, but don't worry, you just have to install a new version of the antivirus software. The old lady followed his instructions, opened a strange website, clicked to install a software, which was actually a Trojan virus. At this point, various web pages started popping up on the old lady's computer. The scammer warned the old lady to not touch the computer at all, otherwise, her data would be lost. Next, the manager was going for her password. He said to the old lady, we would like to apologize for that your computer caught viruses anyway. With the older version of the antivirus software, we will refund your $500 membership fee. Please make sure it is refunded into your account. The old lady logged into her bank account to find the balance had become $2.06 million. The transfer was for $50,000, not $500. The scammer actually transferred $50,000 to the old lady and then told her he had made a mistake, pressed two extra zeros. He asked her to return the extra money or I'm gonna get fired. The old lady was sympathetic, started transferring the money back. She had to enter the password for her account. As soon as she hit submit, the page went black. On the manager's side, all the money from the old lady's account had been transferred over. Cheers broke out from all over the fraud corporate. In just five minutes, they made over $2 million. That was when the old lady realized that there was nothing left in her account. It was all zeros. Her entire life's worth of savings, alongside her pension, they were all gone. She couldn't take it, was about to kill herself. On the other side, the old lady's tenant is Jason. Jason used to be a special agent. After he retired, he became a beekeeper in the countryside. This is how he makes honey. First, he has to keep 100,000 bees. He wears a full body suit and a face covering. He's got a small spray can to dope the bees, so they're more efficient at collecting the nectar. When the top layer is full of honey, Jason takes out the bee panel, carefully sweeps the bees off the top, puts them in the bag, and replaces with a new panel. He gets back in the room, cuts the excess honey off the panel. The panel is then placed into the honey separator. He turns on the switch. After a few rotations, fresh honey starts coming out. The old lady usually takes good care of Jason. Finding out that the old lady had been scammed, Jason decided to avenge her. Jason really isn't someone to mess with. He was about to break into the fraud corporate, carrying two barrels of gasoline. The guard stopped him, told him to get out of there. Jason put down the barrels, grabbed the gun from the guard, gave each of them a punch. He disassembled the pistol, walked straight to the building with the barrels. Jason walked into a large office, pulled a staff member by his lips, and made him get off the phone. He walked to the center of the room, told everyone to repeat after him, I will never scam the disadvantaged again. No one did as he asked. Jason randomly seized another person, and demonstrated a series of punches. The rest of the people lowered their phones, followed Jason's instructions, all swore to never scam again. Jason picked up a barrel, and poured it around the office. Just then the manager came in, he told Jason to get out of there. Seeing that Jason had no intention of leaving, the manager told his men to get him. That's one hell of an agent. Jason took out the first guy with the telephone line, an upper hook took care of the second guy, he used a keyboard to choke the third man, took the pistol from the fourth, spun him around and kicked him ten feet away. The manager clenched his fists, dared not say a word, Jason planted the bomb right in front of him, told them if anyone should call, it would set off the bomb. The manager was scared to death and ran off. A call came in right away. In 0.1 seconds, the call set off the bomb. The whole building blew up and turned into a giant ashtray. But now Jason was in big trouble. He was even a suspect for the murder of the old lady. Jason was going to deliver honey to the old lady. The old lady was his landlord. As soon as he walked in the door, the smoke alarm went off. He called for the landlord, but no one answered. Jason got a terrible feeling. Next thing he knew, he felt a gun on his back. It turned out the old lady killed herself after the scam. Jason recognized it was the old lady's daughter behind him. She's a cop. She found out the cause of her mom's death on her computer. The daughter told Jason. Her mom got scammed out of $2 million. This fraud corporate had been in operation for two years, but the police have found nothing. Jason was furious. They targeted the elderly, were truly the worst of mankind. 
Jason was determined to get revenge, to wipe them clean. He took a phone out of the beehive, contacted an organization, found the address of the fraud corporate. Jason walked in with two barrels of gasoline, set the $30 million building on fire, burnt it into an ashtray. Don't mess with Jason's bees. The manager came to the door with his men, shot the beehive to pieces. Jason was prepared. He turned on the equipment in the warehouse. The four men walked into the warehouse, shoved all the honey to the floor, searching for Jason. All of a sudden, Jason appeared behind one of them, covered his mouth. He wrapped a chain around his neck, got his first kill, then he choked the second man with his gun, until his teeth were forced apart. Jason didn't even sweat. Then he found the third guy, removed the gun barrel with ease, jabbed it onto the man's throat, and then sent him off with a kick. His three men were so easily taken care of, the manager could only shoot aimlessly into the air. Jason grabbed the manager's wrist, the manager begged for mercy. Jason didn't bother to care, put his hand over the chainsaw, cut off his fingers. As soon as Jason left the room, the manager rushed to call his boss. Before he could say a few words, Jason shut him up with a punch. He dragged the manager off the car, and strapped him with a belt. He started the pickup, and sent it off into the ocean. That was to avenge the old lady. Jason took over the call. The boss threatened to kill him. It turned out the director of CIA had his back. The director knew Jason was not easy to deal with. If the beekeeper says you're dead, then you're dead. The boss paid the director to hire a professional hitman to take care of Jason. Jason was invincible. He was at the gas station when he got hit by a car from behind. A hot assassin got out and took a shot at Jason's car. She pointed her gun at the driver's seat, but there was no sign of Jason. Next thing she knew, Jason was behind her. They broke into a fight. Jason easily knocked the gun out of her hand and beat her to the ground. The assassin wouldn't give in, took out her gatling, started firing aimlessly in the gas station. Jason pulled out a honey jar from the car, threw it over the assassin's head, then he set her on fire. He removed one of her fingers and left the scene. The director found out that the mission had failed, sent in Delta Special Forces to make sure Jason would be taken care of. Jason used the assassin's fingerprint to unlock the metal gate. He found the fraud corporate's lair, headed to Boston with the assassin's gear. On the other side, the old lady's daughter found out about the recent incidents. After her investigation, she found that Jason was completely a ghostly figure. All she could find was his birth certificate and a social security card. There was no bank accounts or fingerprints. They had to send a SWAT team to the fraud corporate's lair to arrest Jason. The SWAT team couldn't take on this one man. Jason went up to greet them, suggested that the SWAT team should leave. The captain was just about to arrest him. When Jason threw him to the ground, 20 team members combined were no match for Jason. They were all on the ground in less than two minutes. Jason held a SWAT team member hostage, walked inside. He ran into the special forces sent by the director. Jason slipped out of the rain of bullets, hid in the ceiling. He took care of one guy who came looking for him, then set off the fire alarm. He hid around the corner. The moment the special forces appeared, he grabbed their gun and killed them all. Only one guy left. The two of them got into a fight. Jason and the special forces seemed evenly matched. He grabbed a fire extinguisher, flung it at him, and cleaned up the entire room. Jason took care of two groups of people. The old lady's daughter was back with a third. Jason set up a trap in the elevator. He taped the wire to the corner, led the officers to the elevator on purpose. When they ran out of bullets and were reloading, Jason set off the bomb. The officers tried to run, but got stopped by the wire, sank to the bottom with the elevator. Under Jason's questioning, the scammer gave away who was behind all this. It was the boss's mom, the new president of the United States. Her estate is heavily guarded. Every vehicle must be carefully examined, from top to bottom. Jason sneaked in through the sewer, knocked out the guard when he was doing safety checks, then he pretended to be a guard himself, planted explosives in a car, went into the manor. He changed into a suit and entered the venue, but he was caught. Guns were pointed at him. Jason raised his hands, pretended to surrender, but actually pushed the button to set off the car outside. He took advantage of the situation, grabbed the pistol from the blonde guy, and took out his men. Jason went all the way up the stairs, cleaned up everyone along the way. None of the special forces could stop him. All got thrown downstairs. The blonde guy was furious, charged to grab Jason by the collar, threw him onto the glass. Jason took the chance to grab a piece of glass off the floor, jabbed it into his artery. But the 200-pound blonde guy was tough, pulled out a pocket knife and kept fighting. Jason was flexible. The knife hit the glass. They tackled and both fell to the floor. The blonde guy tried to attack with the knife again, but Jason kicked him in his prosthetic leg, took his brass knuckles for himself. Jason punched with his left fist, stabbed him with his right hand. That was the end for the blonde guy. Jason broke into president's office with a gun. The old lady's daughter rushed in at the same time. She told Jason to drop his weapon. Even revenge had to be done legally. 
One can't fight violence with violence. Jason looked out the window at the ocean. He already knew his way out. He shot the president and jumped out of the window. The old lady's daughter raised her gun at Jason, but hesitated. She put the gun down and spared Jason his life. Jason dug up his hidden bag. He changed into diving gear and escaped in the sea. He was to return to beekeeping and to justice. This concludes the film. This film is titled The Beekeeper. I recommend checking out the original movie. Please like and subscribe if you enjoyed the video. See you next time. Bye.